Katie, the science tea, coming at you today to talk to you about air pressure and how a change in that air pressure can impact an object to the point that it can fit into a space that it wouldn't normally fit into. In an episode I'm calling, Think Skinny, Be Skinny, Suck It In. You know what I'm talking about. You know how when you step up to the mirror, you take a look at yourself, you take that deep breath, you inhale and you feel thin and you feel like you can take on the world? Well, that's what I'm going to do here, except in the name of science, now, today I'm going to tell you, we are dealing with fire, and you know what that means. We need a responsible adult. So here's the thing. If you are a responsible adult, fantastic, you are set to go. If you are not an adult, go find a responsible adult. A responsible adult, not just any adult, a responsible adult. Okay? If you are an adult and you're not responsible, go get you a responsible adult because we are dealing with fire. But wait, we can't go anywhere yet. First, we have to strap in our seatbelt because we are going for a ride. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here, you see my lovely flask. All right, I'm going to take this water balloon. Do you see it? It doesn't fit in there, does it? No, I'm going to make it fit in there. That's right, I am. Watch what I'm going to do here. Very carefully. First of all, I'm going to pull my goggles because this could get dangerous. All right, I am going to take this index card. I cut an index card in half, and I'm going to carefully kind of bend it a little bit before I set this little guy on fire. All right, now, just to help this balloon get into the bottle, I'm going to get it, the edge of it, a little bit wet. It's just going to lubricate it a little bit, help it slide on in there. And I'm gonna tell you what this guy doesn't like to go. See this neck on this bottle? Causes a little bit of an issue, but not a problem because I like issues, right? Okay, so, what I'm gonna do, and watch very carefully. As this starts to suck in the bottle, it's going to do something really cool. All right, ready? Here we go. Got to work quick on this too. Fire. Get a good fire going. Pop it in there. All the way in there. Balloon on. Oh yeah! We did it! Did you see that? Was it super cool? Did you see what that balloon did as it was going in? Did you see it shake and jiggle? Yeah, you know what happened there? Well, first of all, let me show you how to get this guy out. All right, now we've got all this little ashes here with this fire here that we had. I like to get that out of the way. It's not going to burn you. It's already out. I'll turn it a little bit. So we have the edge of the balloon there. So you can grab it a little bit. Now, you can pull it out. Might pop. If you take this straw, slide it alongside, it will pull out. fairly easily. Did you see that? Okay, so what happened here? Well, let me tell you. When you have a balloon sitting on top, just like that, you have equal pressure. Equal pressure on top, equal pressure from underneath. So it's not going anywhere. But as this air heats up inside, when I put that flame in there, the air inside the bottle heats up. Well, when it heats up, what it does is it expands. Those molecules, they get all excited and they are expanding. And when you saw this jiggle, 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 that's because of those hot air molecules, they were escaping out of here as fast as they could. Well, then that means that there was less pressure on the inside than there was on the outside because those air molecules escaped. That air cooled down and it kind of shrank together, okay, because they, they escaped out of there. So as there was more pressure on the outside than there was on the inside, it sucked it in there. It made it skinny. It was thinking skinny and it was being skinny and it sucked right in there. That was pretty cool, right? But let's turn it up a notch. I'm going to take a time out so I can clean up my bottle and I'm going to show you something extra cool to do with this. See ya. Okay, I'm back. My flask is all clean and we are ready to go. We are going to use that same principle of sucking it in, things skinny, be skinny, changing air pressure just like we did with that water balloon. So this time we're doing it with an egg. <laughs> the boiled egg. Okay, you've seen this, right? How does it work? Same thing. Okay, watch whenever I heat that air up in the bottle with the, the, the fire on the, the index card and it's gonna heat those molecules up. The egg will shimmy and shake as those hot air molecules are escaping the bottle. And then that cool air will expand. There's less air in there. There's less pressure. And it's going to suck this egg right in. Okay, now the idea with this or the water balloon is make sure that whatever you use, I'm just using this flask because I think it's super cool. 
Um, but you can use a bottle. Just make sure that the egg or the water balloon is slightly bigger than the hole on the top of your jar, okay? That's very important. If it's too thin, that's not gonna work very well. If it's too big, well, it's gonna go in too easy and that's no fun. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Goggles on, safety first, because we are still dealing with fire. This time though, instead of using water to help to lubricate the inside of my flask, what I'm going to use is vegetable oil. Since it's a different consistency here at the egg, and it isn't as giving as that balloon, is it? No, it's not. So we're going to use vegetable oil just to help give it a little bit more of a slippery surface to work with here. So I've got my oil. I'm just going to put it on the inside edge here just to help it slide in. It's still not going to go in on its own. I'm still going to have to use my science of heating up those air molecules. All right. And it's carved, cut in half, fold a little bit. That just helps it to go into the flask or your bottle easier. Oh, and remember, if you're using a bottle here, we're going to use glass. If you use a plastic bottle, what's going to happen? You're going to have a puddle of plastic. That's what's going to happen. That's no fun. You're going to get in trouble. Don't blame it on me. I'm telling you, use glass. Okay, so here we go. I've got my egg ready. And I'm going to put it in with, you know, there's like, like normally a fatter side and there's a thinner side. I'm just going to help the process out a little bit and put the thinner side down just to help it be a little bit more aerodynamic, if you will, as it goes in there. Do you have to? Well, no, you don't have to. Mix it up. When you try this on your own with your responsible adult, mix it up. Try it out. Do whatever you want. Knock yourself out. Okay, here we go. Fire. Fill it up. Drop it in. There we go. Watch it wiggle jiggle. Magic! Well, not magic, actually. It's science, right? Okay, now here's the thing. Can I get this egg out? Yes, I can. I'm going to show you how, but the thing is, to get it out, you kind of uh, force it out using your mouth a little bit. And do I want all this ashy stuff in my face? No. I'm going to go rinse it out real quick. I will be right back. I promise, I'm not gonna take the egg out and do any hocus pocus magic on you here, okay? I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff and I'm gonna leave that egg in there. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I rinsed out all of, most of that ashy stuff in that paper, but uh, if you look really close, there's still a little bit on that egg. It just refused to come up. So, Mama Bee might just make it a little bit in the face. That's all right, it's not gonna hurt me none, all right? So, um, you can see I didn't take it out of there. My boss still had, it still has some black ash on it. What you do here to get this egg out? Now you can scrape it out and get it out in pieces. And sometimes you might have to do that. But I'm gonna show you how to get it out. We're gonna change that pressure again, okay? So I'm going to make it so that, hopefully, there we go. The smaller end is facing the edge of the bottle, right? Okay, now, same thing with the change in the pressure. But this time, I'm going to blow as hard as I can into the bottle. It takes a lot of air and I, I don't know. I'm full of a lot of hot air. I've been told, I don't know, probably true. Okay, so I'm gonna go super hard into the bottle with the egg still there. And what's gonna happen is this egg is gonna pop out because I'm gonna be putting more pressure. There's gonna be more air pressure this time on the inside of the bottle than there is on the outside with my hot air. And it's gonna push it out, okay? Ready? Let's give it a try. Looky there. Oh, now I'm gonna a little bit lightheaded. But look, I got the egg out. It's whole. See, look, so there's that black stuff on it. It just did not want to come off. There we go. That's how you do it. Wasn't that super cool? Okay, before we go, you know I can't leave you hanging out there without giving you some words of wisdom. What I call that wow moment. Okay, now listen very carefully. Since we're talking about think skinny, be skinny, muffin tops only look good on muffins. You're like, why are you talking about Mama P? You know exactly what I'm talking about. When you look in that mirror and think, oh, look at me, I'm all skinny. If your pants are too tight and your belly is hanging up and there's that roll over your pants, I don't care how skinny you are, you can create a muffin top. You know that, you've seen it. 
Even skinny people, they can wear pants so tight that there's that little extra muffin top on there. That doesn't look good. I don't care who you are. That does not look good. Muffin tops only look good on muffins. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about with our whole air pressure and thinking skinny being skinny, that only works to a certain extent. Remember I said that you need to make sure that the mouth of your bottle, whatever kind of glass bottle, not plastic, we don't want to call it plastic, whatever size you're using, you need to make sure that it's slightly smaller, okay? I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't make sure that it's only slightly smaller. If it's a lot smaller, you're gonna create a muffin top doesn't look good on anybody. All right, now I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna put on these goggles. I've seen this happen. You know, like when you see somebody walking around that mug and talking, you're like, whoa, that's not, that should never happen. Goggles, if we could only wear goggles in the world so we didn't have to see all that, the world would be a better place, I think. Okay, so anyway, we're still gonna lubricate this guy up. Put that olive oil in there. I'm gonna set my piece of index card on fire. Stick it in the bottle, same thing, but if you notice, hmm, there's a little bit more difference this time in the size of the egg and the mouth of the jar. Ready? This is what happens in the real world to our eyeballs when we see somebody with a muffin top. Did you see that? Do you see this? This is what I'm talking about. This is the muffin top, okay? That egg, it couldn't think skinny be skinny enough. Don't do that, people, okay? If you look in the mirror and you're looking all skinny and you're sucking it in and you're still left with a muffin top, please don't do that to the rest of us. Go back in, get some looser pants, get a bag of your shirt, I don't care. Don't create a muffin top because I'm telling you, muffin tops only look good on muffins. Not on people. We're not the muffin man, right? Okay. This is Mom P signing out, telling you to go do some science.